This section heading is called Locally Reflected Cross-Site Scripting to Display Session IDs. So what we're going to demonstrate in this section is we're going to demonstrate how we can use this attack type to display system information back to the local user. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to introduce a JavaScript property that's known as a document.cookie. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass this as an argument to our alert method. So I'm going to type document.cookie. Now this can be used to detect the presence of a session ID. So I'm going to hit enter. Now a session ID is a long randomized value that can uniquely identify an end user with an application. And inside of our alert box, we do not see any long randomized value. So we're going to just click OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some PHP code that will enable our sites to actually generate one. So I'm going to minimize the browser. I'm going to go over to the terminal. And we're going to add this PHP code inside of our custom home page. Uh, syntax error. Where are we here? Oh, up arrow key. I'm going to do a control A. Forgot to put the word nano here. So nano. Enter. And there we are. Okay. So according to your PHP documentation, you should always place this function before any pre-existing HTML. So I'm going to hit enter, up arrow key. I'm going to provide the delimiters for PHP. And we're going to add in the session start function. So this will start or resume a session. Now when it starts a session, it's going to generate a unique token ID for that end user. So we're going to do a control X, hit Y to save, hit enter. And now we're going to go over to our browser. We'll do a page refresh. And now we can actually see that session ID. So I'm going to click OK here. And once again, we're going to verify that in fact, this is a locally reflected cross-site scripting attack by reviewing the attributes. So we saw the system information being displayed back to the local user. And if we right click and view the page source, inside the page source, we're going to see that the insertion occurred within the client side file. So we'll just close this and minimize the browser and we're done.